bring the word of the Lord to you um, this morning. Before I do that, I'm going to uh, just join you in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much that uh, I can come here this morning and bring your word before uh, the people that are gathered together. Lord, I thank you that your word is uh, a living word, Lord, that it is full of uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, the truth of your word, uh, that it, it, it pierces the heart, Lord, that it separates soul from spirit. Lord, that uh, it, is, it is living and active, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that your word would be all those things this morning. Lord, I pray that uh, it would, would bring uh, knowledge and wisdom to those that hear, Lord. And I pray uh, really that your, your spirit would move upon my preaching this morning, Lord, that it would be beyond uh, my own uh, self, but rather it be, would be... Uh, the Spirit of God uh, speaking to these people here this morning, Lord, and that Jesus Christ would be exalted in our midst this morning. Because I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> what I want to uh, <coughs> preach about this morning is... Um, Really, I guess you would call it a phenomenon uh, that's happening in the churches. It's happening all over the world, but particularly it is happening here in uh, the West, in, in the United Kingdom and in America. And partly it, it's a problem that is appearing, and, and I say this is a problem that will appear wherever uh, the, the, the biblical gospel uh, makes contact with a progressive, liberal, cultural ideology, uh, this is going to happen. Okay? And this phenomena, uh, it happened with the Apostle Paul and the church at Corinth, uh, same sort of things. Uh, and this, this phenomena really has been, has been kick-started through one particular issue, and that is what I would call... Uh, uh, the fashionable practice of having women in leadership, okay? The end 2015 preaching about money, start 2016 preaching about women in leadership. Got to be the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't choose to do that. Um, but but this is a what happens is that you know we are a traditional Christian church and we believe that the Bible is the Word of God. You, you can say amen if you like to that. We believe the Bible is the word of God, yes? And therefore, what it says is, you know, God makes the rules. God decides how it's going to be. And so from reading the scriptures, we believe that leadership in the church ought to be male. Now, if the Bible had said, um, I do not permit a man to teach a woman, then I wouldn't be up here. There would be, there would be a woman here, and I'd be happy with that. But that's not what it says. So what you understand, you know, those that know me, I am not, I'm not a woman hater, I'm not, I'm not sexist, I value the women in this church very much, and they have been very uh, faithful to this fellowship, and I'm very personally supportive of me, so, you know, I, I do very much appreciate the women in this fellowship, so it's not about that, it's about being true to the Word of God. And, and what we're getting now in, in the church in general is we're getting women uh, teachers, women pastors. We've just had a, wo a woman, well not us, but the Church of England has had a woman bishop. The Bishop of Stockport is a woman. Because these things are culturally acceptable. But what happens when you, uh, when you oh, I'll use this word, when you violate the word of God, it opens a door put it that way, it opens a door to spiritual problems. Okay, however reasonable it may seem to you, it will open a door to spiritual problems and that's what's happening uh, now. Uh, we are seeing, if you like, a different kind of woman uh, appearing. Alright? And uh, I'm talking about women who are 
very, very strong, very, um, uh, there's a lot of this kind of power dressing going on, and uh, uh, these are women who are very uh, vociferous, they've got a lot to say, and uh, they, are, uh, they are at times quite glamorous as well. And we've seen that, and we've noticed that more and more uh, the names of men are disappearing from these conferences and they're being replaced by women. And some of them are quite glamorous. Now, I'll, I'll quote to you from one particular woman pastor in America. Uh, she said, quote, God has given me my hips and my lips, and I know how to use them, end quote. Now, can you imagine someone like Gladys Aylwood making a statement like that? Um, no, not just because she's of a different age, but because she's of a different spirit. Okay, uh, and that's what I want to make the emphasis of here. This is not coming from God. When you violate the scriptures, when you break what the scriptures say, you open a door and you get spiritual um, problems. And what is happening is, is all, all these kind of elements together, this, this sort of the, the, the glamour, the forthrightness, uh, um, what, what it's bringing is really what some people, I've not coined the phrase, others have coined it, but this is what I want to preach about this morning, is they've called it the spirit of Jezebel. Anyone heard of that? Yeah, now a lot of hysteria about this, but... It's becoming um, a problem. Now the Apostle Paul warns against this. He warns against giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. And so what we're getting with, with, with this, this different kind of woman that's coming out now is we're getting some really bad teaching. Some really uh, uh, what I would call heretical doctrines are coming out. Now, if you are uh, a young Christian, particularly if you're a young female Christian, and, and you, you, just, you just believed on the Lord, there can be something very uh, impressive about the confident woman, you know, smartly dressed, uh, very popular, going out and, and, and appealing to your femininity and so on, and uh, it can even be very popular with some men, some men like that. Yeah, this, Here's a woman, she's confident and, and, you know, she's got a lot to say. And so what we're seeing is women appearing who are very different to the women in the Bible, to Ruth, to Sarah, uh, to Esther, uh, even very different to, to women in the church's history who were godly women, amazing women, extraordinary women, uh, like Amy Carmichael, I mentioned uh, Gladys Aylwood, uh, Hester Ann Rogers. If you don't know who these people are, please find out about them. They are great role models for women in the church. Uh, but they are nothing like uh, these striding, uh, I don't know what to call them really, uh, uh, women that you see who are, who are just coming out there and dominating these platforms, you know, filling arenas throughout the West. Uh, they are nothing like these godly women of old. Now, uh, let me say, whilst this we see this phenomena today, it is not a new um, phenomena. We, we looked at in uh, last week, in fact, in Revelation, uh, where the Lord Jesus spoke to uh, the church at Thyatira. Do you remember he said, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. So there she is called Jezebel. Now whether that was actually her name or whether she just simply comes in the character of that person, uh, I don't know. I think it's probably the latter. I think it's probably she, she encapsulates that character. Sometimes when we talk about the spirit of something, we don't necessarily mean uh, an actual spirit, although I do believe there is spiritual influence here, demonic influence going on, but we can mean that the person has come in the character of that individual. Just to give you an example, in the New Testament, do you remember when uh, uh, the disciples say to, to Jesus, when they, they realize that he's the Messiah, they say, hang on, 
didn't, wasn't Elijah supposed to come first? Because they refer to Malachi and the prophecy there, saying that uh, uh, Elijah is going to come. But Jesus says to them, yeah, he's already come. And they realize he's talking about John the Baptist. Now, he's not saying that, the, that Elijah's spirit came and inhabited the body of John the Baptist. What he's saying is that John the Baptist came in the same uh, character and in the same likeness as Elijah. You know, here's this, this sort of rough, hairy guy who who's suddenly appears and he's upsetting the royalty, he's upsetting important people, just like Elijah did. Elijah was the same, but he suddenly just appears on the scene and he's preaching all this stuff and he's upsetting who? The royalty is upsetting specifically Queen Jezebel. And so what I think when we talk about the spirit of Jezebel, whether it's an actual demonic spirit that has that name, or, or maybe it's just more a cultural phenomenon that's in the spirit of that queen, it is still a real big problem. And uh, what we're looking at here is, is, is really an invasion of the church, uh, a spiritual invasion, but it's very covert often. You know, it's a reintroduction of some of the ideologies and the cultural values that we once held are being reintroduced by these powerful, uh, influential and controlling women. And before you know it, the church is being controlled by them. Okay? So you have to be very wary of uh, women who come over like that. And so uh, let's have a look at Jezebel herself. Let's see what she was like. So uh, if you go to 1 Kings in the Old Testament, 1 Kings. First Kings and verse, uh, sorry, chapter 16. I'll look a little bit at her. And her husband, uh, King Ahab. So, uh, First Kings 16 and verse 29. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. So that's all the kings of the northern kingdom of Israel that were before him. He did more evil in the sight of the Lord than any of them. And it came to pass, as if it had been a, a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal, or Baal, and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar in, for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that went before him. So he's a wicked king, but notice who's, who's provoking him, who's, who's pushing him to do this, who's pushing him into idolatry. It's Jezebel. She is behind it all. Uh, she's a, a pagan queen and she is bringing this, this influence upon him. And again, elsewhere in 1 Kings we read uh, uh, really what the attitude is of Jezebel. It says that Jezebel slew, she killed the prophets of the Lord. 1 Kings 18 verse 13. And we read that she stirred her husband up to do evil. 1 Kings uh, 21 verse 25. And also that she mocked him for his weakness concerning Naboth's vineyard. In that story, he wanted a vineyard, and Naboth said, no, it wouldn't be right for me to give it to you. And, you know, it's not right before the Lord. And so he goes away, has a sulk, and Jezebel says, hey, don't worry about that, I'll sort it out for you. And so she usurps his authority, and she does that whenever it suits her. That's part of her character. First Kings uh, 21, 7 to 13, you can read about that. So what we have here is, is, is a, a, a woman called Jezebel 
And if we combine this picture of Jezebel with the New Testament picture that we read in Revelation, we get a character emerging. A picture starts to emerge of a certain type, a certain kind of uh, woman. What is she like? Well, she has a, a hard heart. A heart is a wicked heart. She might, she might in some way disguise that, but at the heart of her, it's a hard heart, an unfeeling, uncaring heart. She has a desire to usurp male authority. She has a seductive personality. Now, she doesn't have to be young and attractive to be seductive, all different kinds of seduction. This is more a spiritual seduction. And she is a bringer of false doctrine. She brings bad teaching. Okay. This is a big problem for the church. This is a certain kind of woman that's appearing and is being given more and more of a platform to teach what she teaches. Okay, but just look what the Bible says about the character of a godly woman. How can you tell if somebody is coming in the spirit of Jezebel or whether she's a genuine godly woman that God is using? Because what weren't some of those women quite strong? Weren't, weren't some of them? Didn't they have didn't they, they knew the scriptures and so on? Let's have a look at the character of a godly woman. Just turn to first Peter in the New Testament. One Peter. One Peter chapter three. And uh, verse, starting at verse 1, it says this. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be, what, sorry, they also may without the word be won by the conversation, that's by the, the, the behavior of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, great price. That's what God values, is women who are like that uh, uh, description. So let's compare the two for a moment. So, Spirit of Jezebel, hard heart, where the Holy Spirit has influence in a woman's life. She, she has a meek and a quiet spirit. Uh, the Spirit of Jezebel with a desire to usurp male authority, where the Holy Spirit uh, uh, has that, has that uh, control in her life, there's a desire to yield to her husband. Um, again, we have a, a seductive personality, part of the spirit of Jezebel, whereas where, a holy, where the Holy Spirit is dominant, uh, there is this chaste personality. The spirit of Jezebel, uh, the woman who is under that spirit, is a bringer of false doctrine and bad teaching, but where the Holy Spirit, is, where the woman has yielded to the power of the Holy Spirit, she trusts in God. That, that, that's part of her, who she is. She trusts in God the Lord. Now many people talk about uh, uh, women who display that spirit of Jezebel as, oh but she's a strong woman. But you know I put it to you this morning that it takes far more strength to live the life that Peter is saying a godly woman has. It's, it takes far more strength to be at odds with the spirit of this age and to say, actually, I don't do that. Actually, I don't live like that because I trust the Lord. I think that is a far stronger woman to be comfortable in that and, and to be resolved uh, to that than it is to, to come under the influence of this spirit of Jezebel. Now, it's not all about women in the church. It's about men too. <laughs> And the reason that partly we have this problem of these certain kind of women is because of the man. Okay? It's, it's the curse of contemporary Christian churches is weak men. Men who are not standing up. Men who don't know their Bible. 
men who are, who, who are moving to one side and let, letting the women do what the man should be doing. Okay? And this is part of the problem. And we have men who are being... Uh, when, when you get a weak man, when you get a man who doesn't know his scriptures, uh, when you get a man who's not willing to take on his role and his duty, uh, particularly as the head of the household, uh, then what you've got is men who are ripe for spiritual seduction. That's what you've got. Just turn with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 7. Proverbs 7. Okay, Proverbs 7, and I'm going to start reading at verse 6. And this is describing, uh, if, you can, if you can see the pictures, it's describing a young man walking along. Verse 6. For at the window of my house, I looked uh, through my, I looked through my casement, and I beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. That's where it starts, right? Has no understanding. No understanding of the things of God. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Now listen to this. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. If you were studying poetry, that would leap out at you. Look at the emphasis. Five, uh, uh, five pictures of darkness there. Twilight, evening, it's black, it's dark, it's night. There's a sense of foreboding, something bad is going to happen, isn't it? Yeah? In fact, you know, when, when, when Judas goes to betray Jesus, he says, it was night. You know, there's something uh, with that phrase the Bible uses. There's a sense of foreboding and evil. Let's read on. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot, and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, she's outside, now in the streets. And lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day, have I paid my vows, therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee, I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry and carved works with fine uh, linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. For the good man, that is, for my husband, is what she's saying, is not at home. He's gone a long journey. A familiar picture. You get what she's saying. Right, so, so here we have this picture. Here's this youth. This, this, he's void of understanding. And he's wandering along and he sees this woman, this loud woman, uh, in the attire of a harlot. And basically, she seduces him, doesn't she? Right? And look at the words that are used. She lay in wait for him, verse 12. She caught him, verse 13. So he is in a trap, isn't it? He's found himself in a trap. In verse 22 it says, as an ox goeth to the slaughter. Doesn't even realise what's happening. He's just plodding along, foolishly, void of understanding, doesn't appreciate what is going to happen to him. What is her method of seduction? Well, it's, it's a very familiar one. She appealed to his flesh, verse 18. She appealed to his eyes, verse 10. She appealed to his pride, in verse 21. We read that she flattered him. Does this remind you of anything at all? 
First John 2, verse 16. Shall we have a quick look at it? 1 John 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The spirit of Jezebel is nothing less than the seduction of the church by the world. That's what it is. It is a reintroducing into the church of worldly values, progressive liberal values, that say it doesn't matter what the Bible says, what do we do in our culture? What do we do in our time? It's okay. Let, let's just, if, you know, here's a strong woman, let's let her lead. Let's let her teach. Let's just, let's just be fair. But when you ignore the word of God, you open a door and you allow in seducing spirit. It's a spiritual seduction and spiritual fornication. James says, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So it says, James 4 verse 4. Now I cannot imagine what the emerging church movement would make of that verse, but there you are. We have to take note of what the scriptures say. Heed the warning today. You know, in, in, in the start of this new year, let me encourage you to find yourself in Christ. To find who you are in Christ. Whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're a child today, boys, Girls, find out what it means to be in Christ. To be, what's your place in the family? What's your place in the church? Read the scriptures. Find out what it means to be a godly man or a godly woman. Men, let us not be weak and easily seduced. Actually, interestingly, you know, in Proverbs there, it says that even strong men have been, have been led astray by her. Even strong men. But let us not be weak. Let us not be easily seduced. Let us be men of God who are able to teach and able to live what we teach by the grace of God. That's it, isn't it? Let us not be hypocrites, but let us be able to teach. Let us be able to go to the Word of God and teach it to our children, to our wives, and so forth. Men, let us stand up to the mark. Let us, let us take our duty before God. Ladies, I've said much already, so I'm just going to quote to you a verse from the Bible. Favour is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. That, that's the picture of a, of a Christian woman. I want to encourage you this morning, ladies, to be that strong woman of God. Not in the way that the world thinks of strong women. Forget the world. But in the way that the scriptures speak of a strong woman. A woman who is comfortable. A woman who is confident. And confident with her position as a woman. Who's not trying to be a man, but is confident in her femininity. And who she is, a handmaid of the Lord, willing to serve the Lord, and coming to the scriptures and saying, I don't find out what a biblical woman is really like. Let all of us in this new year not love the world nor the things of the world. Let us neither be seduced by the world or covetous of its customs or, or its entertainment or its rewards. It means nothing. These things are of no value. To the Christian. We read that the house of the harlot is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. That's what happens to the young man who is void of understanding. He follows the harlot right down to hell. The glory of Jezebel, with, as the Bible puts it, her painted face is thrown down before Jehu. And her end is, she is eaten by dogs. 
No, it doesn't end. I want to tell you this morning, the Holy Spirit that will receive honor and exaltation in this church will be the Holy Spirit and him as part of the tri unity of God. So my message to you this morning really is to God be the glory in Stockport Evangelical Church for 2016. Let's find our place in Christ. Find your place in the church and let us abide in Christ for this new year. Let's pray.